Hello, welcome to Pseudo Random Sequences for Programmers, where we are going to review pseudo random number generators from a programmer's viewpoint. Note we are not reviewing the details of the pseudo random number generator algorithms. We are not going to review hardware based uh, PRNGs. We are only focusing on pseudo random number generators for C programmers. Let's see an outline of the presentation. First, we're going to look at what is a random sequence. Next, we're going to look at some pseudo random integer sequence generators. Then we we'll learn how to convert them into real valued sequences. After this, we will look at uh, bounded integer sequences followed by randomized permutations. We will take a look at roulette wheel simulations for genetic algorithms. After that, we will study generating non-uniform pseudo-random sequences and uh, which includes sequences with a Gaussian distribution. And finally, we will take a look at Monte Carlo simulations with one example. Let's begin our study of pseudo random number generators for programmers. We're going to look at what is a random sequence. A random number generator generates a random sequence of numbers, uh, which means that it's a sequence that should not exhibit any pattern. And these must pass several tests to show an absence of all kinds of patterns. What is a pseudo random number generator? It is a deterministic algorithm that generates a sequence of numbers because an algorithm can never be random. However, if the sequence passes several tests to show the absence of patterns, we accept it as a PRNG or a pseudo random number generator. Next, we look at pseudo random integer sequences. Most of the pseudo random integer generators have the form shown here. They are implemented as recursive functions. That is, Rn plus 1 is a function of Rn for all n greater than 0 and R0 is given. Uh, here, R is an integer. So, what we see is that if we are given R0, from that the function f calculates R1. From R1, the function can calculate R2 and so on as any standard recursive function. So, this f is the pseudo random number generator function as you see out here. Rn and Rn plus 1 are integers and these integers lie in a range. The minimum value usually being 0 and the maximum can be defined as R max. Now, after a certain number of uh, values have been generated, they start repeating. So, what we have is Rn equal to Rn plus C for some large value of C. So, C is known as the cycle length. This is the number of pseudo random values generated in the sequence after which the sequence begins to repeat. In most of the good pseudo random number generator functions, C equals R max. Now, what is the precaution to be taken? Under no circumstances should our simulation use more than C numbers from a pseudo random number sequence because that would simply repeat the previous sequences. So, if we need m numbers for any kind of application or a simulation, m should be very very small as compared to the cycle length. That is the best scenario. If m is slightly smaller than the cycle length, that is also ok, but the best scenario is still having m very very small compared to the cycle length. Now we look at the seed value when we say that R0 is given the starting value of the recursive function is known as the seed. In most cases the seed value is provided by the user as a user input. In some cases we can use a clock value the number of seconds from the time functions or something to seed the value. This makes sure that different runs of our programs use different seeds because they are based on the clock time. Then we have the C library functions, int and void which has a 
range of zero to rand max. Rand max is an implementation dependent uh, value, and we have another function s rand to give a seed value to the rand function. Now, do not ever use the inbuilt functions rand and s rand because most of them are not implemented very well. Even the best compilers have very poorly implemented rand and s rand functions. So, it is better to use customized pseudo random number generators and a lot of them are available in the literature. So, the first thing you should see is what is your required cycle length and followed by the ease of implementation. Finally, you should check how many tests has it passed. Has it passed a rigorous battery of tests to check for randomness? I will be using a 32-bit XOR shift pseudo random number generator. This is attributed to Marsaglia and the article reference is given here. It has an R max of 2 raised to the power 32 minus 2, which is approximately 4 billion. So the cycle length is also 4 billion. Is a code extremely simple, extremely elegant. This is the 32 bit XOR shift pseudo random number generator attributed to Marsaglia. And these are a few uh, random numbers generated using a seed of 9987, which you see out here, which is given as the input to the program. How do we generate a clock based seed? You simply take the value of the time and you get a integer from it and you send it back. This is the code for generating a clock based seed, a very simple code. Next, we start looking at pseudo random real valued sequences. We can convert the integer pseudo random number generator values into real valued sequences by using the simple formula. We divide Rn with 1 plus R max. This gives us a value in the interval 0 to 1, where 0 is included and 1 is excluded. So we get a value such that 0 less than or equal to xn less than 1. And uh, I am showing you a few values generated by the Microsoft Excel RAND functions. And you can see that the, all these values have the property that they are larger than or equal to 0 and less than 1. 0 less than or equal to xn less than 1. You can also see this in many of the standard calculator based random number generator functions which generate values which are greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1 as you can see in this video clip of my calculator. Here we see a simple application of this real valued pseudo random number generator. Each point is generated as x and y, a pair of random values and plotted on this graph. We now look at bounded integer sequences. What we want is a integer sequence of values jn which lie in the range 0 to k minus 1. That means jn should be greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to k minus 1. How do we do this? The first possible thing that comes to our mind is simply take the integer value random sequence rn and take the mod function with k rn mod k but do not ever do this this is not recommended because many pseudo random number generators use the mod function internally so imposing another mod function and generating a value might lose the randomness of the underlying pseudo random number generator what is recommended is this. You multiply the xn with k and truncate to the integer value. This will give you a value in the range of 0 to k minus 1, both values inclusive. What we are effectively doing is we are dividing the values between 0 to 1 the real values between 0 to 1 into equal intervals and assigning one interval to each of the integer values. Here we can see the example for k equal to 4. We divide the interval 0 to 1 into 4 intervals each of size 0.25 or 1 fourth and assign 
one interval to each of these numbers. This is what is being done effectively by our transformation of Xn to Jn. You can use this for a simple coin toss simulation where we want to get Jn in the range of 0 to 1. Then we mark a 0 for tail and a 1 for head. Here is a simple simulation of 200 coin tosses. In the first one we get 103 heads and 97 tails. We run the simulation again, we get 102 heads and 98 tails. Suppose we want to get a bounded integer value in the range of k1 to k2. That is, we want a sequence qn where the, all the values are in the range k1 to k2 inclusive. For this, we use the formula shown here. k2 minus k1 plus 1 multiplied by xn, which is the real valued pseudo random number sequence then we add k1 and we do the integer truncation this gives us a value qn greater than or equal to k1 and less than or equal to k2 we can use this to do a die roll simulation where we want a qn in the range of 1 to 6 so qn greater than or equal to 1 and qn less than or equal to 6 Here's the values of a simulation done for 300 dice rolls and we see the values are almost equal to 50 a few here and there. We see that the values are close to 50 as expected from a unbiased dice roll. We now look at creating randomized permutations. What you mean is to create a random permutation of the basic sequence of numbers from 0 to n. For example, given n equal to 5, one permutation could be 3, 0, 5, 2, 1, 4. Another permutation would be 1, 5, 3, 0, 4, 2. I'm going to show you here two different methods of creating such permutations. The first one goes like this. We put the values in an array and we pick two random indexes. Here we have picked 0 and 3 and we swap the two values. 3 and 0 gets swapped. Once again we pick two random indexes for the array 1 and 5 and we swap the two values. If we continue to do these swaps for a number of times we expect that we'll get a randomized permutation of the values. The second method which would be a more rigorous method is to assign a random value to each of the indexes. Here we use real valued uh, random values. Then we sort them in an increasing order of the random value. So when we put the random values in increasing order, the associated integers get sorted. And here we start with the sequence 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We assign a random value to each of them. We sort them and we get the randomized permutation 3, 2, 4, 5, 0, 1. Here are some examples of a randomized sequence generator. First one generates 5, 0, 4, 2, 3, 1. The second one 4, 0, 5, 2, 3, 1. The last one 0, 2, 4, 5, 3, 1. Here's another use of such a randomized permutation generator. We can use it for a stochastic search of the traveling salesman problem. What we do is that we create randomized permutations of the sequence of the city numbers in the traveling salesman problem. And we continue to create randomized permutations and finally keep the one which gives us the lowest cost. A simple but very dumb method to get a solution to the traveling salesman problem. Now we look at a roulette wheel implementation mainly used for genetic algorithms. What we have is this wheel with certain numbers in the range 0 to 8 and each of them has a certain probability of being selected. You see that some of them occupy larger areas whereas some numbers like 3 and 6 are missing. What this means is that for each of these values we have an associated probability value. We can see that the probabilities for 3 and 6 are 0 as you saw on the roulette wheel. These are linked to the fitness values uh, in the genetic algorithm and uh, I do not want to go deeper into the genetic algorithm 
but you can read up on genetic algorithm implementations on the net. Now, once we have the probability values, we calculate the cumulative probabilities. That is, we add up all the values which are lower than the value for the given index. So we get these values 0 0.1, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.55, 0 0.65, 0 0.85, 1. Now we pick a real value random number in the range 0 to 1. Suppose we get 0 0.48, then the roulette selection is 4 because 0.3 is less than or equal to 0 0.48 which is less than 0 0.55. If the real valued random number is 0 0.93, our selection of the roulette wheel is 8. If it is 0 0.3, our selection of the roulette wheel is 4 and so on and so forth. We can use this roulette wheel simulator to model a loaded dice. Here we see that we want to create a dice which gives a slightly larger number of the number 5. We have set the probabilities of 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 to 0.16 and the probability of 5 to 0.2. These are the end results of this simulation of a bad or a loaded dice. We do 200 rolls and we see that indeed the values of 5 are slightly larger. Then we do 1000 rolls and we get the expected number. We had set a probability of 0.2 that should be around 200 rolls. We get 203 rolls. Now we look at the slightly difficult topic of non-uniform pseudo-random sequences. So what do we mean by non-uniform generators? For this, let's look at three different functions associated with each pseudo-random number generator function. The first is a required probability distribution of the values in the range 0 to 1. For each value of 0 to 1, what is the required probability? Next, from that we can create a cumulative probability distribution by integrating the probability function. Finally, we need to find the inverse function of the cumulative probability distribution. Let's understand this with a simple example. In the standard uniform random number generator, we want that all numbers between 0 and 1 should be created with an equal probability of 1. Px equal to 1, which is a constant. So the cumulative probability function, if you integrate Px, we get Cx equal to x. Now the inverse function of this is qx which is x. Now let's look at a biased or a non-uniform generator. The probability of values from 0 to 0 0.5 has been set to 0 whereas the probability of values from 0 0.5 to 1 has been set to 2. So this gives us the modified cumulative probability function and the inverse of this cumulative probability function is shown here. In the same way, we have a slightly modified function here, where the probabilities of a random number below 0 0.25 is 0 and a random number above 0 0.75 is 0. The probability of lying between 0 0.25 and 0 0.75 is 2. So we get this new cumulative probability distribution and we see the inverse cumulative distribution function which is required for this non-uniform generators. Let's look at this simpler mathematical example. Suppose we have px equal to 2x. We want an increasing probability from 0 to 1. So the cumulative distribution function is x squared. And the inverse of the cumulative probability function is square root of x. So now if we generate any value using a uniform random number generator between 0 and 1 and take its square root, we will get the probability distribution which we need. That is px equal to 2x. Here is what we get if we run the equation. For more complicated uh, probability distributions, the cumulative probability function becomes more complicated and the inverse of that gets more complicated. We need to create our own equations for such non-uniform generators. How do we generate Gaussian sequences? That is, we want to create random sequences with a Gaussian distribution having a mean of 0.0, .0 and a standard deviation of 
one implementation is from the book numerical recipes in c the art of scientific computing by press tikolsky wetterling and flannery it is based on the box miller transformation the code is given in the accompanying code files i will just show you the output which we get when we run this gaussian generator next we'll look at a very very simple example of a monte carlo simulation we'll try to calculate the value of pi using a monte carlo simulation we inscribe a quarter of a circle in a square of size 1 then we start creating random points in the square where x is a random number in the range 0 to 1 y is a random number in the range 0 to 1 and we check for each point whether it's outside the circle or inside the circle we can see that the area of the quarter circle divided by the area of the square that is this ratio will be equal to the ratio of the inside points to the total points which in turn will be equal to the ratio pi by 4 that means we can estimate pi as 4 times the ratio of the inside points to the total points we do this we run the simulation and we get these approximate values of pi as 3.142 3.1468 and 3.152 so we see that the monte carlo simulation does a pretty good job of estimating pi we hope you enjoyed the video and we wish you all the best in all your programming projects to download the pdf ebook and the c source code that goes along with this video this is the download link for you this is the qr code of the download link for the zip file containing the pdf ebook and the c source code please send your valuable feedback comments and uh, helpful remarks to my email id ravipreddy@gmail.com we hope that you enjoyed the video we would appreciate getting a like We will be happy if you could share it with your friends and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel to make it easy for you here's the QR code to get to our channel on YouTube This video is released under a Creative Commons source attribution license 4.0 Kindly attribute our website www.spinningheadmedia.com if you happen to use this video for your own work or creation thank you